I'm Ken Lee, an Associate Professorial Lecturer here at the London School of Economics. I guess my job boils down to two main things. Firstly, a traditional academic role of teaching and educating students and doing research. And then the second part of my role as the Director of the MSc Accounting and Finance Programme, responsible for about 200 to 250 students passing through our department every year. Clearly, like everybody, the last 18 months has been a real challenge, in particular because it was so different from our experiences uh, before. So the main challenges were clearly, how do I engage with students? How do I kind of assess, are they listening to me? How do I vary what I do to embrace new technology? And in all of that, how do I sort of make sure that the motivation levels both of myself as a teacher and my students are kept at as high a level as we possibly can? Zoom has a built-in polling uh, feature, but like a lot of faculty members, I actually ended up using um, an external uh, polling bit of software, which is really, really simple to use, but worked very well. But personally, I use something called slido.com, S-L-I-D-O.com. Uh, and basically, it allows you to use multiple choice questions, uh, polls, word clouds, uh, and other types of visualization of questions. And so what I would do is, I would start each session with a Slido uh, question, two or three, based on the content from the previous session. And it achieved two things. First of all, it made sure there was a nice little bit of provision, what we'd done before. But secondly, it started the session without some heavy content straight away and in a visually engaging way. Slido is a very engaging, in terms of visual tool. And obviously it's interactive. So again, you're saying to students, this is live, this is online, but it's not just watching a video. It's, it's way different, um, way beyond that, uh, if you like. As part of our delivery, uh, we will often ask students to break out into, into groups and to undertake work on case studies, mini case studies, or just discussion topics. And clearly Zoom offers a great facility to very simply put your students into breakout rooms. And they're really, really um, helpful for, again, breaking up a class and making sure that you've got different aspects to your online delivery. From the start, using interactive polling or whatever, to the main content, using slides and making sure they're annotated, to now using, using breakout rooms. They're a, a classic and essential tool for that. So when students were in breakout rooms, we found that somewhere around four to five uh, students per group is the maximum that you should go for. The second thing is to give students a very specific task that they need to do. The third thing we found useful was to tell groups up front, one or two of the groups are going to be presenting whatever they're finding, because that helps make sure that the groups are actually working and are focused on a particular topic. But lastly, and I think this is critical and unfortunately burdensome for large groups, it's really important that either a teaching assistant or the faculty member themselves visits uh, each of these breakout rooms if at all possible. You go into these breakout rooms and often the video cams will be off for a number of students. So by going in, you can say, please turn these on. Please, can you engage? How are you doing? And it kind of acts as a catalyst for the group to get on the task. In terms of what we may have learned from the lockdown and teaching techniques and interaction techniques that we might keep going forward, I think undoubtedly the recording of content delivery is now going to be a mainstream part of our educational uh, service. It's clear students get a huge benefit from being able to review recorded material, um, even if it's delivered live on campus, that I, I think it's, it's too strong an advantage to, to throw that away. The second thing is, for me, 
is, is much more comfort with technology. So using technology in a more nimble way. Um, for example, this might involve the idea of delivering an, an extra session online. This might involve getting an expert speaker who's overseas to deliver a lecture to students, something we probably wouldn't have considered in the past because of our unfamiliarity with technology and also the, the speakers. So I think there's some of the things that we will definitely keep. Having said that, clearly, we're very much looking forward to come back onto campus and, and returning, at least in the main, to uh, content delivery in the way that we used to do it.